Welcome to the wide world of esports, the show devoted to all things esports. I'm your host, Catherine Knorr. Today, we're talking about Game Glass, a new way to game. Joining us from Melbourne, Australia, uh, is the CEO and co founder of Game Glass, Andy Lee. Welcome, Andy. Good morning. Thanks for having me. All right. So, what is Game Glass? So Game Glass is a way to use your phone or your tablet to interact and control your games with uh, touchscreen controls. All right. And so how did you come up with that idea or who came up with it? It was a bit of a, a long process. So my, my co-founder is the, the, um, the head of product. He looks after all of our visual design and he posted an image for a, uh, a control screen that he was working on for a game called Star Citizen on, on Reddit. And the community there really loved it. They, they really wanted to be able to use it. They wanted to be able to use that as a way to control their game. It looked really great. It looked like it was, it was part of the game. Um, and he got a really amazing reaction to it when he posted it to that community. And he started up a Discord and people started flooding in and, and, and talking about how, how cool it was. And I saw that as well and thought it was amazing. I'd been thinking about something similar, but I'd been thinking about it more from a, a platform perspective. Wouldn't it be amazing to have those kinds of experiences for lots of different games? But I didn't have the, the product itself. I had the, the platform that I was thinking of. He had the product, but wasn't really thinking about the platform. So I reached out to him and we started talking and uh, going over some, some ways we could build it and uh, away we went. Started Fantastic. building the team and yeah, it's been great. All right, so let's show the video. Andy, tell us what we saw in that video. So uh, about a few months ago, we uh, announced that we had become officially licensed to a partner with CIG, the, the developers for Star Citizen. So that was the official announcement of our partnership with them. Uh, it was also the release of some brand new shards. We call the, the screens that go on your phone or your tablet, we call them shards because game glass and shards, everyone likes a good pun. Um, and we put that together, that video to show off what the new shards look like and what the rest of our platform looks like. Um, the other parts of what Game Glass does is not just the, the shards that we give you to, to play and control your game um, using a touch screen on your phone or your tablet, but you can also build your own shards or edit them or, or share them with your friends as well. So you saw a little bit of that in the video. Okay, now I know what shards means. I wasn't <laughs> Yeah, it makes my finger feel like it cut with glass or something. But, um, uh, but anyway, so does this, how does it impact gameplay? So one of the things that we really wanted to focus on as we were building these shards was trying to find a way to make games feel more immersive to play, um, you know, especially for sim type games, for flight sims or racing sims or, or space sims, anything that's got lots of fidelity to the way you interact with the world or you control your spaceship or your car or your plane. There's always tons of key minds, you know, hundreds, literally hundreds of key minds sometimes. And they're all really great because they're all for systems and, and functions and features that make the game feel really immersive to play. But there's so many that you forget what they are, the way you're interacting with them perhaps is, is a keyboard, maybe it's a joystick, maybe it's two joysticks but there's still not enough room for all of the, the different keybinds. Um, so what we wanted to do was try and put together a screen that, that made it easier for you to use a lot of those commands and do it in a way that made it easier for you to remember what they were as well and felt like it was part of the game. It looked and felt like it was part of the game. So you know, you're, you're playing a game with a, uh, with, your, with a spaceship, for example. You wanna lower your landing gear on your spaceship. 
can't remember is the the command for lowering my spaceship is it control l is it alt g i can't remember we put a button on the screen that says landing gear and guess what happens when you press the button that says landing gear your landing gear comes down so it's a way to play make the game feel easier to play make it easy for you to access all of those features of the game and do it in a really immersive and beautiful way this seems like it would be a great thing for beginners of of a game or if if someone hasn't been playing long enough or they want to improve their speed is that right that's a really good point definitely we see uh, uh game glass is a great way for beginners for people to kind of onboard themselves into the game instead of having to hunt through the menus for all the key binds um for, for not just for what the commands are but what what kinds of things i can do they can see all of the commands on on the shards and, and it makes it easy for you to know what you can do and, and how to do it so definitely for beginners that's a really good point um but it's also as you said for people that are coming back to a game perhaps they used to know all this stuff and now they're coming back they haven't played it for a little while they can't remember what some of those commands were so game glass certainly makes that easier and then for people that are a bit more advanced that are a bit more um looking for for performance improvements or a way to, to make themselves a bit more effective they can customize game glass to give themselves just the features they really think are going to enhance their performance as well so that that customizability part of it is a big thing too we see a lot of users building shards for themselves that are very narrowly focused around exactly how they want to play the game or exactly the features or the buttons they want to have on the screen just for their performance improvements um so those are those are some good points so is it software that you would download then yeah, so there's a web app, essentially, you would download uh, the software from our website and installs on your PC. And that lets you build the shards or edit and load the shards. Um, so you can configure them the way you want, you know, you can put the buttons where you want them on the screen, you can attach whatever commands you want to those buttons, those commands and actions can be keybinds, they can be mouse clicks, they can be delays, they can be sounds, they can be whatever you want. And then the piece of software you install on your PC um, listens for those commands and sends them straight into the game. So as far as the game is concerned, it's just game glass is just like a, a gaming mouse with a hundred key with a hundred buttons on the side of it. And then you install an app on your tablet or your phone as well. And then you that logs into game glass and you see your library of all of your shards for all of your games. You pick the shard that you've configured that you've built or that you've downloaded from our marketplace and you load it up on your phone or your tablet. Wow, that's fantastic. I could I could see where um, people would really get used to that for their games and and would use that. Um, they would kind of not feel as comfortable after a while just playing it in the regular way. Yeah, that, that's really our goal. That That's what we want Game Glass to become, a, a normal part of gaming. You have a keyboard, you have a mouse, you have Game Glass off to the side. And it kind of works because everyone's got a phone, everyone's got a tablet, and it sits next to us on our desk, on our, on our couch when we're playing games. So having a shard on it for whatever game you're playing is, is definitely our goal. And that's a big part of what we think of when we are designing all of the components you can use inside a shard, all of the buttons and the dials and the switches is, Obviously, we want we don't just want game glass to be for space sims and, and, and flight sims. We want it to be for every game, for RPGs, for MMOs, for, for esports games, for shooters. And the the types of shards you would build for those games are all really different, but that's what game glass was designed about because it's so easy to build your own shard with whatever buttons and dials and switches and sliders that you want that, that have whatever actions attached to them that you want that look however you want them to look. It can support any game and any shard or any function you want those shards to, to give you for it for any game you want to play. So are people using this in competition? Uh, we haven't seen a lot of it in competitive esports yet. We've seen some shards for, for League of Legends, for PUBG, for, for Fortnite, um, for a couple of others, but we haven't seen it used competitively yet. And that's, I think, in the area where we do want to be a little bit careful about it. I think there's a definitely a big spot where we want to work on kind of the, the accessibility and the, the intuitiveness of games and that immersion factor. And certainly, as I said, a lot of people use it to, to help them with their personal performance. But we want to really steer away from Game Glass being something that's a, um, a really raw, obvious performance enhancer all by itself. You know, things like macros and scripts and those kinds of things where you can build 
some simple macros. You can attach multiple actions to a button. So it kind of works like a little bit of a macro. We don't want it to automatically give you a huge performance increase. So we're really keen to see how it performs in an esports and in a competitive sense, but we don't want it to be something that, that really boosts you in an easy way above other people. So Andy, what is your background that led you to do this? Uh, my professional background is in digital advertising. So lots of ad agencies working in, in digital as a project manager and operations manager, general manager. So sort of on the, the business side of things and on the, the digital advertising and marketing and, and sort of product side of things. Um, and I've always built teams. I've always built companies. I've always built, you know, the, the engines of business inside agencies. So that's always been where my professional interest and expertise has, lie, has, has lied, but um, always been a gamer. Um, when I was very, very young, my handwriting is awful. My mother bought a computer for my brother and I when we were very young in, in high school so we could type up our, our homework and print it off instead of having to, to handwrite it. And she bought a game with the computer. That was her big mistake. She bought a game with the computer. And we spent far too much time on that. But since then, we've always played games. So I've managed to find a way very luckily to, to merge my gaming passion with my, my professional expertise. And, and uh, it's been fun. Terrific. So what, how do you want Game Glass to impact the gaming industry? That's a, that's a good one. So I think, as I mentioned, we... Our goal is that we want Game Glass to be a really standard part of gaming. As I said, you know, keyboard, mouse, Game Glass. Um, but we really want to make Game Glass something that can transform how people interact with games. So yes, at the moment it is about you know, a, a screen with buttons and sliders and, and dials that feels like it's a more tactile and, and intuitive and immersive way to, to play those games. But we really want to move Game Glass, not away from that, but uh, extend it so it can provide new experiences for how you play games. You can imagine playing Sea of Thieves perhaps, and yeah, you've got a, a picture of the, the galleon that you're playing and you've got your little icons for your friends on that picture and you drag one from the sails to the, the cannons and then on your friend's shard, they've got the same shard and they can see their icon has moved from the sails to the cannon. So they can see you, you want them to change position. You know, that, that's an experience that's not connected to the game. It's not about controlling the game, but it enhances how you play the game, how you experience the game. You could imagine in the competitive sense, you know, League of Legends, perhaps you, you take a screenshot of the map and you draw with your finger on your phone, the battle plan, where you want people to go and what you want people to do. Everyone else has got the shard and they can see those plans appear on their phone or on their tablet. So again, it, it's, it's not connected. It's not controlling the game. It's enhancing your experience of playing the game. So if we can extend it out and make everyone feel that, when they get a new game and they start playing it, it's not just the game. Their experience of playing the game is the game plus whatever cool experiences they want to add to the game using Game Glass. Sure. I would think it's when you say other cool experiences, I think that it would be really um, a, a, a fun thing to tell your friends, look what I've got, you know, like this is really cool. Watch this. Look how fast. I can play, you know, with game glass as opposed to how you're doing it, you know, like I, I definitely think that it would catch on. Yeah, we, we see a lot of that with the, the games that people, all the, the, the shards that people use right now is they, they'll say, look at the cool thing that I made, you know, it makes playing this way or using this system so much easier than, than, um, than doing it in another way. And, you know, we've built the platform in a way that's really easy to, to grab a code from a friend for a shard and directly import it into your library or just to grab it from our marketplace. And you can see a, a collection of all of the shards and just download whichever one you want. Um, but you're right. You're absolutely right that, you know, that ability for people to, to show off what they've made, what shards they've made, or, or talk to their friends about how much more fun um, a shard makes their games. That's definitely something we see too. Sure. And so do people use game glass uh, alongside other peripherals like joysticks or steering wheels? Yep, yeah, we see that a lot too. I think, you know, the, the really hardcore dedicated gamers will often have uh, a lot of those peripherals, that, you know, one, two joysticks and a steering wheel. Sometimes they, they really set up their, their sim pits to, to be pretty awesome. 
Um, you know, the downside of those, you know, the, the great thing about them is they're a very direct and tactile way to control your movement in the game. A steering wheel is great for steering a car. You know, a joystick is great for moving your, your, your plane around, um, but it's not so great for accessing all of the other functions in, in the game. And they take up a huge amount of space. They're very expensive. They're very specific for what they do. They're amazing at what they do. I don't think Game Glass is better than those peripherals at what they really are great at. But Game Glass works perfectly alongside them. You know, your steering wheel is for steering your car. Game Glass is for everything else that, that the game does. And that pairing works, works beautifully together. So has there been a community built? Um, uh, you know, is this kind of a community thing where there's like a Game Glass community? Yeah, we've got a, a very active Discord. There's a lot of people on our Discord server um, talking about the games they play and how they use Game Glass for it. And you know, as I said, we we came out of Reddit, out of the Star Citizen community, so we've always been been part of that. We take a lot of inspiration from the community and and how they they play the games and what what things they're trying to do in the games or, or and what functions or features that they're trying to use. And we're trying to find a way to make those features and functions more accessible and immersive for them. Um, but absolutely, you know, we, we, we take a lot of that from the outside communities and from our own community as well. And they're sharing the shards they create and, and sending them to each other as well. So are you paying attention to what people are saying then about it and then making changes based on that? Yep, absolutely. That's, and that's one of the great things about being a software platform is that, you know, when we see that people are really using a certain set of features to maybe it's new features that have been added to a game or they're using features in a new way or putting more emphasis on using those features for, for whatever reason, uh, we can make changes to the shards. And then we push those changes out and everyone who's got that shard, they get that new button that we've added. They get that new feature that we've added. So we're always pushing out you know, new buttons for shards, new actions they can add to them, new components in the library for them to build their own shards with. So we're always listening to what the community is talking about and we're always expanding and adding to it. So what's the coolest thing that you've seen someone do with Game Glass? We've seen some really amazing stuff um, for farming sims. So, you know, Euro Truck Simulator, Farming Simulator. You know, I, I consider myself a gamer, but I never played farming sims and truck sims and, and tractor sims, but it's huge and people spend a lot of time and have a lot of passion for those games. And we've seen some community members build some, you know, control screens for their, for their tractors that are incredibly in depth and very realistic. And it was a, a usage for it that we hadn't kind of seen before. And they're connecting it to data inside the game and doing some really cool stuff with it. We've also seen some really cool shards for productivity software as well, which is an area we want to, we want to move into more in the future as well. But for, for apps like Fusion 360, the 3D modeling program, or for Photoshop, we've seen people create shards to make it easier to use those programs as well, which was pretty cool. Sure, so application is much larger than gaming then. Uh, I think it'll be a big area for us to, to explore in the future. That's always where we've seen, you know, this core idea of, you know, Game Glass can make playing games better for you by whatever definition for, of better that you want. Maybe you're looking for more immersion. I'm looking for something that's more intuitive. Someone else is looking for a, a competitive edge. Everyone wants their games to be better in a different way. And Game Glass is flexible enough to let people get whatever they want out of more of what they want out of their games. That exact same thing applies to, to productivity software or industrial software. Uh, the thing you want out of your application is going to be different. I want more productivity. I want more effectiveness. I want more integrations. Um, Game Glass will give you that as well. So moving into those areas is, is definitely something. We see people creating some actually some really cool stuff for streamers as well. People have got stream decks for streaming, for controlling their, their Twitch streams, for example. We've seen people create some really cool control panels for, for that as well. So that'd be a really interesting area for us to move into in the future. Okay, so everyone's talking about the metaverse. metaverse. And so do you see Game Glass being, uh, having a role with the metaverse? So it's VR and the metaverse and augmented reality. Uh, they're just a, a new, a, it's another way of solving the same problem is how do I more intuitively interact with software? So instead of 
having a, a menu that you drop down and select from, you reach out with your virtual hand and you grab something and you pull the lever or you turn the dial or you pick it up and you drop it somewhere. So those are really intuitive, immediately understandable ways to interact with software. And that's what Game Glass does as well. So enhancing the way we use some of those platforms is definitely something that we'll be looking at. We've already looked at ways for us to put our shards inside VR world. So being able to invoke shards or a type of shard, and it may not replicate a screen exactly, it could be completely different. Being able to have a shard in VR worlds and be able to invoke them and customize them in whatever virtual meta world you're in is definitely something that we'll be doing. You know, we see shards, yes, as on phones and tablets, but we see shards on smartwatches as well and in VR and on you know, IoT devices and on smart fridges. And a shard is just a better, more flexible and intuitive way to control software. It can be games, it can be anything and being able to build it and define it yourself, that's kind of the core of Game Glass. So putting shards in lots of places, in lots of ways for lots of reasons, that's kind of what we want to do. So would you think that disabled people with various types of disabilities would um, find these shards to be advantageous in operating various uh, software games and other other applications? That's a really great question. Yeah, absolutely. I think you know, Xbox did some really amazing work with some really accessible control devices that made it a lot easier to interact with their games. And I think Game Glass can do very similar things, you know, being able to control the size and the placement of those controls and being able to put them in a location, you know, with having a much smaller, more maneuverable phone or tablet, and then, you know, making those controls accessible in a way that really suits your needs and suits your personal particular needs because Game Glass is so flexible. Absolutely. I think that's a, that's a great, great, great use case for it. You know, I can also see this as being a uh, product placement in a movie because it's really cool. Have <laughs> been done yet? No, it hasn't been done. We've had some really good conversations when we're looking at designers to help us build components. Some really great conversations with artists who've built those motion graphics for, for movies. Um, nothing yet, but that's a really interesting spot for it. I can definitely see someone in a in a sci-fi movie, picking up a shard for that's that's got a device with a game glass shard on it and using that to control uh, something in in their world. I think that would be really cool. Sure. So, um, are you a gamer? Yes. Yeah. No. Always have. Um, don't have a lot of time for it, unfortunately. Now with running game glass and and kids and all the rest of it, but no, still play as much as I can. Still get excited about new releases. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. And, and what games do you play? Uh, I'm a, my my niche is sort of survival, open world kind of crafting games. Your Subnautica, um, Forest, Green Hell, uh, those kinds of games. So I like sort of the survival base building crafting games. Um, but MMOs as well, obviously big into you know, World of Warcraft back in the day, Final Fantasy now. Um, and then, you know, love Destiny. Destiny is an amazing world. We're really looking at Starfield coming up. It's going to be pretty exciting. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, broad range when I get the time to play is, is good. So did the pandemic impact your business and the direction of your business? No, not at all. Our team is is global. You know, when Craig and I, my, my co-founder built the team, um, you know, he's in Canada, I'm in Australia. We were global from and remote from the very beginning. We built our team so everyone was remote. We've always worked from home. Um, so it didn't didn't really impact the way we worked together. Um, and I think people had more time to, to play games, to, to spend some time at home, um, you know, which absolutely has, has some, some terrible downsides, but um, it didn't impact us a lot in terms of our operations and, and the business as a whole. All right, fantastic. So um, what do you see the future is for Game Glass? So in the short term, we've got some new shards coming out for some new games. So we have some a collection of shards coming out for Microsoft Flight Simulator, which we're extremely excited about. It's a, an amazing game and they're just going from strength to strength as well. And they've got a huge community of people that are modding it with new aircraft and, and uh, new content in, inside the game as well. So we're really excited to get those shards out. And then we have some shards coming for Final Fantasy, 
uh, working on some shards for other flight sims for DCS and X plane, for example, and then uh, Euro Truck Simulator, the, the farming sim games as well. And then from there, broadening out into some MMOs and some RPGs. So more shards, for more games. And then we've got some really cool features coming out for, as I said, for, for smartwatches and, and a few other places as well. So really looking forward to the, the shards for some of these specific games that, that we're developing. Terrific. And uh, Andy, thank you so much for uh, telling us all about Game Glass. Um, how can people uh, find you? Firstly, thank you so much for having me. It's been great to, to be on the show. It's an amazing show that, that you produce here. Um, the best way to do it is go to our website, gameglass.gg. You can uh, grab the, the software you install uh, to make Game Glass work. You can see the different shards we make and you can have a look at the marketplace as well with all of the shards that we create and all of the shards that our community creates as well. That's the, the cool thing about our marketplace is if you create a cool shard you want to share, you put it in the marketplace and, and everyone else can see it. All right, fantastic. Well, now I want to uh, get shards for my game. Um, Perfect. All right, thanks, Andy. And uh, thank you to our viewers for joining us today. Next week, my guest will be James Hess uh, with Encore Events. See you then. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.